One of the most difficult things you can ask of an inverter is for it to start an electric motor, particularly one that's uh, on a pump, like a, uh, a reciprocating style pump especially. So things like uh, dehumidifiers, refrigerator, refrigerators, uh, air compressors, things like that are very difficult for, for inverters to power. And that's one of the reasons why I went overkill and got a 2500 watt unit instead of uh, just getting something around 1,000 watts because an 1,000 watt inverter is not going to be able to start most, uh, most motors. So I'm going to use this old dehumidifier as my test load, one of my test loads, for testing the uh, motor start capability of this. Um, I had featured this, uh, had used this dehumidifier on uh, some previous videos, I think part 7 of my UPS to sine wave inverter project. I'd use this as a, uh, a test load for surge capability, and that particular uh, sine wave inverter that I constructed out of UPS was capable of producing about, uh, I think, 3,200 watts for its uh, peak surge capability. I know that this one is only capable of producing about 2,000 watts surge, so it's well, well behind that one. So I want to see if uh, it is capable of starting this, this dehumidifier when it's being powered by two batteries through two pairs of 4-gauge cable and connected to a running car, or in this case my running car analog. So I have it plugged in and I'm going to try to turn it on and see if it starts. I'll take a look at the, uh, the load bar graph, which I haven't shown, any, shown yet, but uh, it's not particularly useful, but it's kind of interesting to see what the uh, uh, startup surge is on this dehumidifier. So I'm going to turn it on here. And it did start the dehumidifier. You can see that uh, only one bar is on right now. Uh, it's drawing 7.3 amps and about 700 watts. So at 700 watts, only one of these bars goes on. It's not particularly useful to have this bar graph. And in fact, I've never been able to max it out because I don't have enough uh, uh, capacity, um, 12 volt uh, amperage going into it. but. Uh, I guess it's kind of nice that there's at least something there. <clears throat> so I'll shut this uh, dehumidifier off, and uh, just out of curiosity here, I'm going to uh, turn it on to do a locked rotor draw test. Again, I covered this in part 7 of that uh, inverter video, so I'm not going to describe exactly why I'm doing this, but just to see what happens. And uh, it's on watts, so we'll take a look at uh, this thing and the bar graph at the same time. I think we can see both here. So about uh, 2,000 watts is all it's able to do for surge capability, as I had said. And I know that this uh, dehumidifier actually draws around 3,500 watts is what its uh, surge capability is if you plug it into a wall socket here in my house. So that pretty well settles it. 2,500 watts continuous. You're probably not going to be able to get that unless you do something really special with your input power. 5,000 watt peak, completely bogus. It's about 2,000 watt continuous and 2,000 watt peak. And I'm unable to test the 2,000 watt continuous claim because I don't have a power source that can actually power it continuously to see if it overheats. But uh, after all of this testing, it actually is a little bit warm now, but nothing particularly bad. And uh, I think for most, uh, for most uses, you'll never reach the uh, thermal capability of this. So you should be all right that way. Here's my refrigerator. It's a pretty typical full-size refrigerator. Uh, you, if there's a, a power outage or something, you're probably very interested in being able to power your refrigerator, which is why I'm doing this test. I have it powered through this 40-foot, uh, 12-gauge extension cord, which should be roughly equivalent to your uh, in-house wiring if you wanted to power it through that. But uh, anyway, it's a nice heavy cord. I have it plugged into this power strip, which is off right now. And uh, I'm going to turn on the power strip, and uh, we can uh, see if the refrigerator starts up and see what the load is here. So it took a pretty hefty surge to get that refrigerator started. You saw the bar graph go up a good portion of the way. Probably took 1,500, 2,000 watt surge to get the thing going, but it is running. Uh, it's a rather quiet refrigerator, so you can't hear it, but it did start up, so that's good. I think I will, uh, just out of curiosity, also plug it into this kilowatt to see what the, uh, the draw is of my refrigerator. And there is the wattage readout on my kilowatt meter with the uh, refrigerator running. It only takes about 150 watts to run, but it takes that really high startup surge to actually get started.
probably 1500, 2000 watts to get that thing going. And uh, I just wanted to show this because that's pretty typical. Just because your appliance may take 200 watts doesn't mean that a 400 watt inverter is going to power it. You need something with a much higher surge capability. Something like this, which is apparently adequate. I retested the startup surge requirement of my refrigerator and it's actually a little bit over 1000 watts. So my uh, 1500 to 2000 watt estimate was, was off. It's a little over 1000 watts. So I was thinking, uh, what would be the uh, a typical load, a very difficult load to start, that people would require of this, uh, this inverter? Uh, one of the common uses of inverters is to run uh, power tools on trucks. So this happens to be a, a rather small in size air compressor, but uh, it has a very large compressor on it. It's a 13 amp motor, it's 2.5 horsepower they rated for, but uh, it's a high CFM compressor on a, uh, on a small tank. And uh, I know that if you have this plugged into a, uh, a weak circuit in your house, it doesn't like to start up, especially when it's cold. Um, it's kind of a, a cheap compressor that way, but uh, it does have a very high surge draw and it's uh, difficult to start. So I'm going to plug this into that inverter and uh, see if it works. So I have my uh, inverter all set up here and let's see if it starts up this air compressor. And it does start it up. So, the uh, draw out of curiosity on this compressor is uh, a little over a thousand watts. It'll probably climb as the pressure increases in the tank. Power factor, amps, 11 amps, so the 13 amp rating on it is probably pretty realistic once it gets up to peak pressure. But uh, I guess I'm happy with that. Now that the pressure in the tank's a little higher, my batteries are a little lower, let's give it a, another try. Now it doesn't want to start it. Wait a little bit and try one more time here. Okay, here goes. Took a little bit, but it did eventually start. So, uh... I'm pretty happy with that. It actually does power my uh, my air compressor. And if it starts this one, it should start just about any air compressor since this one has uh, pretty weak starter windings. It takes pretty good voltage to get this one going. And uh, the tank just filled up to full and it shut off, so I'm actually going to use my air compressor to uh, inflate some tires that I have in the garage. Um, and uh, then I'll continue on with this. There's one more thing that I want to note about this inverter. I don't have the proper equipment to test the output load, load regulation of it. Uh, they claim plus or minus 5%. I was pretty skeptical. But uh, this is uh, about the best that I can do. I have this incandescent light bulb here, which uh, is brighter when the voltage is higher and dimmer when the voltage is lower. So we're just going to kind of do a subjective test here. Um, you can kind of see the, uh, the light. I'll just shine it somewhere where it's obvious. You can see the uh, intensity of the light. And if I turn a load on, you can see that the light uh, changes in intensity significantly. And here I'll just cycle between uh, turning this heater on and off. And you can see that the intensity of the light bulb changes significantly. And here it just shut off. And then it turns back on. And uh, this inverter tends to do that. Every once in a while when you turn the load from on to off, it'll shut off for a few seconds which is uh, pretty annoying. Uh, depending on what you're using this for, that could be a complete deal breaker. If you're just powering your uh, uh, skill saw and air compressor with it, maybe it's not such a big deal, but uh, it is, uh, is a little bit annoying. So the output load regulation, I can't tell you what it is, but uh, it's pretty clear that it's not 5%. It's quite a bit worse than that.